Hello, everybody, to our live show today. Um, I would like to first um, introduce and welcome our performers. We have all together 18 people live streamed in our Zoom theater today. Um, 14 co-performers operating on four different continents. And they will bring to you poetry that is close to their heart and to their languages today. And then uh, in, in, uh, in multiple languages, and then we will take photographs of them in our play camera studio. For um, accessibility, I would like to say that we will try to provide transcripts of the show later for the recording. Uh, for now, you can find on our website uh, a, a kind of structural script uh, about the show and how it will unfold. I might sometimes switch into German because We do have some Germans in the room who do not speak English very well. And, and as we all know, there are many languages on this planet. It's not just um, English. Um, there are also four performers who are basically running the show today. Uh, there is Don Sinclair operating from Toronto. He is operating the show as our technical director today and the hero of the day as well. Then we have uh, Martin Colina, he will be operating the plate camera and the digital interface of the plate camera in the photo studio in Neubrandenburg in Germany, uh, together with Heike Sommer, who is in the same space, same physical space with him, and she will be responsible for the live feed segment uh, of that studio. And then there's me, and I'm a cosmonaut, and sometimes I'm an astronaut, and I might change my face throughout the show. We will see what happens. Um, what else can I say? Yes, most importantly, we have a co-performer, which is uh, a historical plate camera from the 1870s, which uh, we um, met last year for the first time, and we made friends with this camera. And we tested our interface and how to take photographs with an analog camera in the digital world of this global pandemic. Uh, no, 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 no. I have a... This was our introductions, right? Over the Zoom room. And we go now to four, general welcome. And I will change my face to, let me see if I find it. Here we go. <laughs> no problem. You avant-garde, Don. That's the thing. That's why we love to work with you, avant-garde. So here comes the general welcome to the audiences on YouTube and in internet land. And I'm sure you're all also sitting in all sorts of physical spaces. Um, we have performers in the room who are in, in uh, Western uh, Canada, uh, and they basically have breakfast. Uh, and then we have people in Melbourne, in Australia, who would really love to go to bed now, but no, they come here to co-perform with us. And then you have a number of countries and continents in between. So this is a, the time spent today. Um, I would like to do, since I'm operating from Toronto and Canada, uh, a land acknowledgement. And I would like to acknowledge that we are operating on traditional indigenous land here called Takaronto on Turtle Island. Um, and um, I want to, we, Don and I want to uh, express our gratitude that we have this opportunity to work on this land. Now this show, Dear Audiences, is a new experimental live performance project by the Digital Dramaturgy Lab Squared. And over the summer, Don Sinclair, Martin Kulina, Heike Zoma, and myself have been working on this project. And then we invited co-performers from around the world to present themselves and this project to the IMF International Media Arts Festival audience. This is the only real time live stream performance of this festival. So this is very special. And we would like to thank the IMF uh, curator, Nenad Bogdanovic for inviting us and for his support. IMF is located physically in Novi Sad, which is a city in Serbia. 
And now we will move uh, over to the photo studio and we will show you uh, how it all works on that end and where our plate camera is located. Okay, so what we are seeing here, um, is the desk on which uh, the laptop uh, that connects Martin and his camera with the internet and with us in the Zoom room is located. Next to it on the right side is, a, is an external monitor. And um, in front of that monitor is the plate camera. It's currently covered with a pinkish kind of uh, uh, piece of cloth. And Martin is in the Zoom room with us waiting for his um, role to play. Uh, but Heike is in this space right now, giving us um, an understanding what the setup is. Heike, kannst du ein Stückchen weiter zurückgehen, sodass wir auch die Kamera, die Plattenkamera noch sehen? Okay, die habt ihr zugedeckt. Gibt es dafür einen Grund? Um, here we can see Martin next to him, the plate camera, in front of him, the monitor, from where we will take the photographs of all the performers. And then, of course, there is Martin uh, himself. And my script tells me that I now have to change my mask. This mask, by the way, these digital masks that we are using, we chose from Snapcam um, creators. And we will reveal the names of these masks and their creators on our website. Um, this one is called Rabbit Hole. And we are going to, um, to move over to our next section of the performance, which is section five, stage directions. So let me explain to you uh, again uh, what it is we're going to do. Uh, what are we doing today in this real-time live stream performance? In our show, our international performers that you met at the beginning of our show in our Zoom room will one by one present a poem first and then enter the plate camera photo studio. All performers, are meeting in a Zoom teleconference room online right now, but are physically sitting in spaces around the globe, spanning many time zones between Vancouver, Canada to Melbourne, Australia. From the Zoom room, our back and theater uh, stage area, we are broadcasting in real time, sitting uh, in real time and, and live via the open broadcaster software OBS using Max MSP on the festival YouTube channel, well, we switched it to the Digital Dramaturgy Labs uh, uh, channel. Um, and all of this is operated uh, on the back end by Don Sinclair, who also has designed um, uh, this interface for us. In Neubrandenburg, a city in Northeast Germany, we have set up our analog digital plate camera studio that you just saw. And from uh, there, we will, um, very soon take photographs of our co-performers. Uh, this camera is from the 1870s and we have linked it to the times of the pandemic uh, to the digital world. Uh, we will be showing all the photographs that we are taking today at a virtual online gallery opening on Saturday, September 4th. And we will share the details after our show. So, um, next, we will watch uh, a visualization, a mapping of what the setup of our uh, photo studio is like and how we are taking analog photographs with a digital audience.
Okay, welcome back, dear audience. Um, today and now in this moment, uh, we will start our poetry show first, and then we go to the photo studio. And we begin with Renusha, who um, lives in uh, currently in Australia. And hi, Renusha. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm good. very happy that you're here. Uh, I think uh, September 1st already started for you, did it? <laughs> it, it is, yes. <laughs> Yeah, so, so we are all still on Tuesday, but you are super avant-garde here. Um, <laughs> so how do we pronounce your name, Renusha? Uh, Renusha. Renusha. Yes. Renusha. Um, and, and can you tell us a little bit about your background and the poem uh, you chose? Uh, yeah, uh, so I just finished my PhD in computer-based interactive in the arts, and I'm interested in researching uh, human computer interaction, uh, sound, music, and um, uh, uh, interactive media. So this poem I chose. Uh, so it's there's a little backstory to it. This is written in the perspective of Yashodara Devi, who was Prince Siddhartha's wife, and this poem expresses Yashodara Devi's uh, emotions after Prince Siddhartha leaves the palace and his family to attain Nibbana. And Prince Siddhartha is uh, Lord Buddha's name before he became uh, Buddha. Yeah, uh, so would you like to start your reading? In which language are you uh, reading? I'm reading uh, in Singhala. In Singhala, which yes. is spoken in? In Sri Lanka. In Sri Lanka. Yes. Okay. Okay, this is your show now. Renusha, yeah. please <laughs> go ahead. We want to know yeah. more about this poem. Uh, so, yeah, it goes like this. Suanda Bojun Valandu Magehi Misandata Nibada Bojun Rasa Karadun Baladanta Suanda Pala Pala Vavian Himianta Suanda Mal Nitara Pipian Ran Kandata Himae Gosin Mal Yahanaka Sitinavada Komala Anagi Siripa de Karidanavada Hinge Nativa Devio Murakaranavada Magi at Rajuni Oba other Kotanaka Yeah, that was the poem. Uh, that's actually two poems. Okay. And then we will move on to the photo studio, right? So, uh, so thank you very much, Renusha, thank for you. your for presenting your poem. Um, I think uh, many people in the Zoom room uh, learned about this poem and the backstory for the first time, and so this is really great that you ch uh, chose to uh, share this with us. Um, so we are now in the photo studio, and uh, Martin will take the photograph of you with the plate camera. And once that's done, uh, we will move on to the next performer uh, and the next poem. Martin. Martin, das ist jetzt, uh, uh, wir, wir bewegen uns jetzt in dein Studio und du übernimmst jetzt. Thank you. Thank you. 
Hi, Art. How are you? Hello, Art. Can you hear me, Art? Hello, Barenze. Hey. Bonjour. <laughs> Bonjour. Uh, nice to see you. Art, where are you at this point? Je suis in the world. Au Québec. I am in Sherbrooke, Quebec. Oh, okay. It's a two. Is it a bilingual city, uh, Art? Non, c'est une ville euh, unilingue. It's a monolingual francophone city, but there is a small oh. anglophone community in Lennoxville. <laughs> and there is a, even a tinier <laughs> allophone community. Oh, okay. Uh, that's interesting. Um, so, Art, you, uh, how do we pronounce your name, Art? In Armenian, it would be Art Baba Yans, but in English, it's Art Baba Yans, and in French, it's going to be Art Baba Yon. Oh my God. <laughs> I wonder what it would be in Chinese or in Japanese. You know, you have to <laughs> think of something. Um, so, Art, you chose. Uh, <laughs> I think we're getting Martin's. Uh, Martin, if sound. you Martin, if you could turn off your sound now, because we are talking to Art right now. Um, awesome, that's wonderful. I have uh, again my poetry mask on, and Art, uh, can you tell us a, a little bit about the poem you're going to present? What it's about, um, which language, um, and why it's important to you. Um, oui, bien sûr. Uh, je vais uh, utiliser le poème Impromptu. I'm going to read a poem Impromptu by Hovhannes Shiraz, uh, who was an Armenian poet who lived in the 20th century and whose father was killed by um, um, invaders. And um, it's a very short poem. I'm read I'll read it in the colonizer languages of Canada in French and in English. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's uh, a commentary all on its own. Um, so the, the stage is yours, Art. Merci bien. Nous étions en paix, comme nos montagnes. Vous êtes venus comme devant fou. Nous avons fait comme nos montagnes. Vous avez hurlé comme les vents fous. Éternel, nous sommes comme de montagne. Et vous passerez comme les vents fous. We were peaceful like our mountains. You invaded like savage storms. We rose against you like our mountains. You howled like savage storms. But we are eternal, like our mountains. You will die out like savage storms. Merci. So we're back in our photo studio. Thank you so much, Art, um, for this sad poem. Um, uh, a sad and also politically quite relevant poem still today in so many contexts. Um, we would like to um, take a photograph of your beautiful Armenian face art sitting somewhere in Quebec, Canada, uh, speaking in French and English. Uh, so you don't have to speak while we take the photograph, obviously. <laughs> but uh, we would like to include it in our um, exhibition on Saturday. And um, I will uh, leave uh, the show now to Martin um, uh, to take the photograph. And if communication is necessary, he will talk to you. And Martin?
Hallo Frank. Ja, hallo, grüß dich. Kannst du mich gut hören? Ja, wunderbar. <lacht> so, du sitzt auch in Neubrandenburg, ja? Na ja, auf so einem kleinen Dorf. <lacht> Ach, auf einem Dorf. Uh, okay, ihr habt Internet. So, Frank is not sitting in Neubrandenburg, as I thought, but in a small village. But I'm glad that he can connect via Internet. So, Frank, um, tell us, uh, how do we pronounce your name? Wie, wie sprechen wir deinen Namen aus? Frank, Frank. Fr And Frank. the last name? Brehe. Okay, so everybody, Frank Brehe. And you can translate it into any language you want from there. But in German, his name is pronounced Frank Brehe. And Frank, tell us a little bit about yourself. Ja, so viel gibt es da gar nicht zu sagen. Ich bin Sozialarbeiter und Naturfotograf und wohne hier auf so einem kleinen Dorf und bin gerade wirklich glücklich, dass die Leitung hält. <lacht> <lacht> ja, ich auch. So, Frank is saying that, uh, that he is a, a professionally a social worker, but also a, a nature photographer. And he sits in this little village and he is very happy at the moment because the internet connection is working. And, and that is cause for celebration for him today. So, um, welches Gedicht willst du uns denn heute vortragen, Frank? Und warum ist das für dich wichtig? Ich lese eins vor von Henning Zibritzki. Und er hat ein Band geschrieben, äh, wo er Gedichte über Vögel macht. Und das ist so wunderbar, weil er immer den Kern des Vogels die bestechende Eigenschaft so herausarbeitet, dass es fast schon beängstigend ist manchmal. Oh, okay. So, uh, so Frank is going to present um, a poem. It's called The White Stork. Uh, it was written by Henning Sibritsky. And, um, and he loves this, this, the, this collection of poetry about birds so much because he thinks that the poet really understands the essence of birds, uh, almost to the point where it's unbelievable. And of course, we should remember he is a nature pho photographer, so he has a special uh, connection to this. Okay, uh, Frank, we are going to jetzt ins Fotostudio schicken zu Martin, uh, and then we will das a photo von dir aufnehmen mit der Plattenkamera. A nature photo von Frank. Gedicht. Oh, Gedicht, I'm sorry. I am, I am also ahead of myself. Please, first the poem. <laughs> ja, bitte, erst das Gedicht. Danke, dass du mich erinnert hast. Ich glaube, die Maske, die konfust mich. <laughs> ja, das Gedicht, bitte. <laughs> okay. Du kannst anfangen, Frau. Weißstorch. Mehr Schnabel als Kopf. Mehr warten als bewegen. Weißstorch. Mehr Schnabel als Kopf. Mehr warten als bewegen. Als suchen und langsames Abmessen. Ein Stocken. Ein Schreiten. Das Rückschritt bleibt. Ein schwankendes Ausharren. Zwischen zerrissenen Wurzeln. Stoppeln. Auf dem Weiter. Das Herab hängt auf, dass es verwirbelt weht, steht auf einem Bein, fast schwerelos, bis er sich zusammennimmt, aufstellt und nach unten schnellt, ein roter Stoß. Danke. Dankeschön, Dankeschön. Jetzt bin ich mit. So, 
now the moment has come um, that we will take the photo of you, uh, Frank. Hello, Martin. Um, and Martin should be ready to uh, take over and take the photo, and he will yeah. communicate with you if, if necessary. Okay, Martin, up to you. So we are back in our poetry studio now. This time uh, we meet Philip. Philip, how are Hi. you? <laughs> um, uh, good question. I feel full of a lot of fears about the things that are going on in the world just now. Right. And I think many people share these concerns and emotions. How do we pronounce your name? Um, good question. Um, I'm actually American and my family says Philip Braze, but um, the German pronunci pronunciation is Philip Braze. Yeah, so you live in a bilingual world. Uh, you come from across Lake Ontario, Rochester, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, Niagara right. Falls. <laughs> Niagara Falls, yeah, and now uh, and now you live in Berlin most of the time. Right. Most of the yeah. time, I travel between here and my place of work in Passau, which is a small city in Bavaria. Right, Bavaria is also an experience all in itself, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah, sure. it's beautiful. Um, so, Philip. You, you are presenting um, a, a piece that has a very long title. You want to talk about this a little bit and then present your piece? Yes, it has a long title because it's the opening scene of a play which I wrote, which combines uh, elements of performance art and a very old piece for me, about 25 years old, which I've been rewriting this past year was rehearsing this with my students at the academy, the Atenor Academy in Passau. And because of Corona, our um, premiere was canceled. So <laughs> today right. is a change. Yeah, we can sure. all relate to this. <laughs> yeah, so, okay, so today is the day. Um, we will, uh, we will give you the stage, uh, Philip, so that you can present um, your piece uh, as part of our show. Looking forward. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> White Color Guard, The Powers That Be, Episode 1, The Chorus of the Travelers. Horden schreiend, Menschen horden, roter Schutt, verbrannte Erde, heiße Winde sie tragen, gelben Staub aus den Süden, fachen die Feuer des Hasses, der Angst. Von den gelben Hügeln, den Gipfeln hin ins grüne Tal, da sah ich drei Finger auf dem Weg hierher, hier sah ich, ich sehe, das Tote, das syrische Kind, 
am Strand gespült, als die morgendliche Flut hereinbrach und alles ausspie, all das, was nicht mehr gebraucht wurde, konnte die Stimmen nicht mehr hören, die wir alle doch mit uns trugen, ja, tragen in unseren Herzen all die Lieder, Gebete. Wir stehen, wir warten in Schlangen und erzählen uns Witze und lachen in Lumpen, fast eingeschnürt nass, mit zerrissenen Zählen auf wunden Füßen, ein zerfetzendes Ich und kein Weinen mehr, nein, kein Wimmern der Seelen, einzig der Wille zur Flucht, der bleibt vor dem Töten. Getötet wovon? Von wem? Killed by what? Why? Paralyse, Lethargie, Stumpfsinn, alle schauen, die Welt, sie starrt, sie zählt, zählt Leichten und zählt und zählt und zählt, unaufhörlich, kein Ende. The actors move unobtrusively into the audience and begin to whisper their individual secrets into the ears of the audience, asking them to pass the messages along. The theme of the play is, I am not from the Yellow Mountains. The theme of the play is, please don't tell anyone that you saw me here. The theme of the play is, My real name is not Abbas Karimi. Please keep my secret. The theme of the play is, I am gay. They want to kill me. The theme of the play is, strap me under your truck until we have crossed the border. The theme of the play is, I am very lucky. I have an uncle in Calais. The theme of the play is, Please drive me to Berlin. My sister is waiting for me there. The theme of the play is, my uncle was Taliban and he killed my father. And my uncle killed his family. The theme of the play is, I am young. I am strong. I could work. So, photo. Thank you, thank you, Philip. Uh, so this is a, uh, it is a kind of a, a hybrid, right, between uh, a poem and um, and uh, theatrical monologue that you've written there. Um, what inspired you to do this? Um, um. Uh, over the past years, I've had a lot of um, um, rather intimate contact with many refugees, most of them from Syria, and uh, have been involved with a project in Augsburg called the Grand Hotel Cosmopolis. And uh, it seems to have become my major theme uh, or obsession in the last years um, in a city like Berlin being... Um, shoulder to shoulder with so many um, people who have had to choose to leave their homeland for whatever reasons, so. Yeah, uh, yeah. Now this is important context. Um, so we are in the photo studio now with you, Philip. Okay. Uh, we will take this photo uh, with this historical plate camera which is connected to, uh, to the internet. And so we can take a photo of you, although you are not in the same space with Martin. And I, um, and I sent you now to, into Martin's photo studio. He will take over. And if he needs to give you instructions, he will do so. And um, yeah, so good luck. 
I'm looking forward to seeing your photograph in our exhibition on Saturday. Hello, Roberta. Hi. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> it's so nice to have you as a performer in this in this experimental performance today, connecting poetry with um, real time photography uh, all across the world. Um, where are you right now? I am in Toronto. It's a beautiful oh, day. Yeah. It, is, it is a beautiful, I'm sitting in my basement, so I, I don't really have, a, <laughs> a, you know, a news on that. But I guess once I emerge from the underground, I will know more. Uh, so, uh, Roberta, in English, we always call you Roberta. But I wonder, how do we actually pronounce your name? <laughs> Roberta. Roberta. <laughs> I mean, you know, the music of that. And then what about your last name? Buyani. Roberta Buiani. I just love the, the you know, the Italian <laughs> pronunciation Actually, of your name. My last name is not Italian, apparently. It's been Italianized the, during the fascist era. Right. Because so my gra it? great grandfather was from Albania. Oh, from Albania. <laughs> so, ha, huh, that's so interesting. It's, uh, what are the neighboring countries of Albania? Romania, is that one of the neighboring countries? No. Bulgaria. Bulgaria. Uh, oh, and, yeah. Well, no, maybe a tip. I don't remember. I think it's Greece for sure. And well, Serbia. we definitely have to look this yeah. up, people. Montenegro. Montenegro. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, Albania. Um, wow. It's interesting how, uh, how names uh, uh, travel from one place to the, the next. So your family traveled from Albania, then they end up in uh, Italy, and then you are now sitting in a you know, in a wonderful summer day in Toronto in Southern Canada. And you're also um, streaming yourself worldwide uh, 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 through the internet at the same time. So, um, so what's the, the poem that you chose and, and what's important about it to you? So the poem that I chose is a poem by um, Eugenio Montale who um, uh, was a poet uh, who was acting during the uh, second half of the uh, 20th century. Uh, the poem that I chose is from a very famous um, collection called Ossi di Seppia, which was published in 1925. Uh, 1925 is quite uh, significant uh, for the Italian history, not for nice uh, reasons. Um, it's because it marks the rise of fascism. Um, well, fascism um, arose uh, uh, in the years uh, immediately after the First World War and uh, also after the, um, the Spanish flu pandemic. And uh, of course, Italy was in a great uh, economic, uh, cultural and social crisis. And uh, uh, he wrote this poem uh, uh, to denounce uh, the rise of violence and uh, the rise of uh, this um, um, man who is uh, uh, a populist man and is very uh, self-assured and uh, um, he wants all the answers for himself. Right, and we know who you're talking about. <laughs> we know who you're talking about. Um, and there are still people like that, sadly, we have to say. Uh, but um, yeah, so we, uh, we invite you on to the poetry stage now. And, and this is your show, Roberta Buiani. Thank you very much. Thanks so much for having me. The title of the uh, poem is Non chiederci la parola che squadri d'ogni lato. Ossi di Seppia, 1925. 
Non chiederci la parola che squadri da ogni lato, l'animo nostro informe e a lettere di fuoco lo dichiari e risplenda come un croco perduto in mezzo a un polveroso prato. Ah, l'uomo che se ne va sicuro, agli altri a se stesso amico e l'ombra sua non cura che la canicola stampa sopra uno scalcinato muro. Non domandarci la formula che Mondi possa aprirti, sì, qualche eh, storta sillaba è secca come un ramo. Codesto solo oggi possiamo dirti ciò che non siamo, ciò che non vogliamo. Oh, thank you. Thunderous applause. Yeah, so as discussed before with other performers, uh, Martin is getting ready um, and Heike will be also documenting. Um, so Martin will take a photograph of you and all the performers in the room, but Heike will also uh, make a documentation photograph of what happens as this happens. And this will also be part of our um, exhibition as well. So we will talk, uh, we will present in our gallery both the uh, the product and, and the process uh, at the same time. Um, and I leave you with Martin now uh, in his online super duper plate camera studio. Don't be afraid. <laughs>
Uh, but I decided on this one because it relates to what I am reflecting on and going through right now. Um, I lost bo both my parents last year in the, during the pandemic, not because of COVID. And so I've been dealing with the loss of my parents, but also accompanied with the loss of, of my Mexican hood, as it were. Uh, there's, there's a right. migratory grief that is happening yeah. alongside the grief of my parents, right? And so the poem Absolutely. speaks about migration. And I thought that it was it was interesting to 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 to, to read a poem that is not in Spanish and that is about migrating. Um, right. To see, yeah, yeah, that's the rationale. Okay. Right. I, I read there is a there's a a famous um, shopping center in Singapore that's called Mustafa Center. So that's that's it, right? The poem is to the shopping center, which is Mustafa <laughs> Center is a landmark place in Singapore. It's a shopping right. center that is huge. It's open 24 hours. And it's such a landmark that you go to Mustafa Center to hang out. Right. That's where right. the globalized audience coming from all over is meeting. And it's, yeah. Okay. It's uncanny. It's, 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 it's wonderful. Yeah. It's a wonderful place. <laughs> yeah. Well, since it's uncanny, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, uh, wonderful. So the stage is, is yours, um, uh, and I'm very curious to he hear more about that shopping mall in poetry. Very good. So here we go. Mustafa Center, a fact sheet by Puja Nancy. Mustafa Center is a 24-hour mall in Singapore on Said Alwi Road in the heart of Little India. This is a poem of love. Born on June 8, 1951, five-year-old Mustak Ahmad leaves his, mo his home in Jampur, Uttar Pradesh, after the death of his mother, to be with his father, who sells tea and bread from a pushcart in Singapore. This is a poem about the places we have to leave. As a young boy, he sets up a stall next to his father, selling handkerchiefs and socks he buys with his own pocket money. Eventually, he leaves school early to start his own business. This is a poem about the maps we have to follow. In 1971, when the government imposes a ban on street stalls, he rents a 900 square foot space at no a number one Campbell Lane selling re ready-made garments. This is a poem about relentless immigrant work ethic. In 1985, when rent escalates by 70% and following the government's acquisition of his shop for conservation, he decides to lease a 40,000 square foot space on the ground floor of Sarangan Plaza. In a few years, business does so well that he buys 20 storefronts on Syed Elwood Road, which he tears down to build a 75,000 square foot department store. Mustafa Center, is named for Haji Muhammad Mustafa, Mustak's father. This is a poem about how we leave our marks, leave our father's names permanent in the topography of a country, how we turn our father's names into plagues, how we turn them into likeness made of stone. In 2003, Mustafa Center announces that it will be open 24 hours a day. This is a poem about making home feel less far away. Mustafa Center is home to the widest range of Indian groceries in Singapore, a jewel mart, a money changing service, a pharmacy, postal services, and a travel agency. In 2005, for a brief moment, Mustafa Center sells parallel imported cars. This is a poem about brown movement. Following its 2004 renovation, Mustafa Center turns over 300 million per annum. You can find almost anything in Mustafa Center, almost. Mustafa Ahmed becomes a Singapore citizen in 1991 and has lived in Singapore 63 out of the 68 years of his life. In 2004, the Singapore Tourism Board names Mustafa Ahmed Tourism Entrepreneur of the Year. In 2008, Forbes ranks him number 37 on the list of Singapore's 40th rich, richest people. In the 2006 National Day Rally speech, the Prime Minister mentions Mustafa Ahmad. He says, you get the right foreigner here. 
he creates thousands of jobs for Singaporeans like Mr. Mustak, and you need to get more people like him. Currently, Mustafa Center occupies 400,000 square feet in the heart of the city. This is a poem about taking up space. An entry to TripAdvisor calls Mustafa Center an out of sh Singapore shopping experience. This is a poem about how you can take up all the space in the world and still they will never see you as their own. 400,000 square feet is roughly the size of seven football fields. In 2017, Mustad Ahmed is asked to vacate the space he has leased in Sarangun Plaza, which is slated for redevelopment. This is a poem about right of soil, about land. In anticipation of its impeding closure, Musta Ahmed can be seen almost every day pacing around the store as he stops and gazes at the empty shelves. We're not sure that he's thinking, but we can understand his feelings, says one of his workers who has been working at Mustafa for over a decade. We started from here and have grown so big. This is a poem about where we have come from. Maybe this is a poem about survival. For many employees, practical concerns outweigh any nostalgia. Several of them will be redeployed for different roles or departments which they are unfamiliar with. Still, some of them will miss the place they call home. It holds a lot of memories for me, says Mr. Mohideen, a cashier, his hands looping a cable tie around another shopper's back. Mr. Mustak, however, shrugs off the impeding closure. He says, there is nothing to feel bad about the place that we do not own. This is a poem about the displaced children of displaced children. Thank you, Vanessa. That's quite a question. I know, no, right? I also love. I also love. Oh, the we, have on, we have to move on. We have to move on, Felipe. Okay. You have to move on. Move on. Move on. Yeah, we move on to uh, to the photo studio now. And um, and Martin will take your photo. So our next performer, Anna, um, you, I think you're the youngest co-performer in this, in this group today. So this is really great to have you here uh, and to hear what you have to say. And also I see you, you wrote your own poem, which is also a very courageous act to do. So um, I, I very much applaud this. Um, Anna, how do, we, uh, how do we pronounce your name? In German or in English? How would you pronounce your name when you introduce yourself? So in English, it would be Anna Christiansen, and in German, it says Anna Christiansen. Right, yeah. So we hear a musical difference, right? Uh, in how we pronounce these names in different contexts. So Anna, um, what are you up to? Where are you currently? Um, actually, a little south of Hanover in the city called Hildesheim in Germany. Right, that's the university uh, where you study, right? Actually, and, yes. and yeah. What is it that you study, Anna? I only know the German name. It's Kulturvermittlung. Yeah, that's a very good word to think about in English. <laughs> it would be kind of art education, but not like a teacher. Yeah. 
it's difficult to uh, to translate into English, so I would have to think about that too. Um, has the word culture in it, but that is doesn't it means more things in the German context than you would think in English, I, I guess. Um, so yeah, wonderful. So um, so what's the what's the title of your um, of your poem? And when did you write it? Um, actually, I wrote the poem for this occasion, and the title oh. is "Zwischen Linienleben," like living in between lines, so finding a space to be in that's not white or black. Right. Yeah. So uh, uh, not in uh, extreme opposites, right? But finding a space somewhere in between. Wonderful, Anna. So um, the poetry stage will be yours. Don will tell you when the stage is open for you. Zwischen Linien leben. Tön Melodien geben, zwischen Licht und Schatten auch mal Pause machen. Zwischen Weiß und Schwarz Farben finden und entspannen an den Stränden Dänemarks. Zwischen Stadt und Meer stürmen trotzen, sei es auch manchmal schwer. Zwischen Geburt und Tod das Leben lebenswert machen. Das ist mein Gebot. Wonderful, Anna. And uh, yeah, so the moment... Yeah. Thank you, Anna. So this uh, this was a poem. I think the only poem that was written specifically for this event. I think I feel very honored <laughs> that you did this. So that's wonderful. Uh, and now um, we will take a photograph as our um, historical plate camera of you, so that we can also uh, show this uh, beautiful photograph later in our exhibition on Saturday. Um, yeah. So I'm very happy that uh, this can happen. And um, I will leave you to Martin. Uh, he might give you instructions, um, but he has already developed a very efficient choreography between his machines so that he gets faster and faster with taking his photographs is almost uh, mind boggling. Martin, this is for you and Anna now. Hi, Mar uh, hi, Lars. Mars, hi. I almost said. Hi. Hey, Lars, where are you? What is this? I'm in Berlin. You're in Berlin. How, how do we pronounce your name, Lars? Uh, you can say Lars Crosby, like the Americans would say, uh, because my name is uh, currently uh, connected to the uh, Norwegian and the Scottish folks. So... Uh, oh. But you already can also say Lars Crosby. And this is the pronunciation of the Germans would say. Right. They pronounce the R differently, right? They don't say Crosby. They say Crosby. Yeah. 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 Uh, so it's, it's great to have you here also, uh, Lars, uh, particularly since you have composed uh, a lot of music. Uh, for projects that we were using in our lab and, and it's beautiful music and the music we're using here for our show today is was also composed by you. Um, so do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Why did you choose this poem? Um, or this, uh, this piece? Yeah, my, my poem is, uh, is actually for myself. Uh, and it's uh, printed last year in the main tenant uh, 14. Uh, and it's from Three Room Press, uh, a, uh, a, 
a print um, uh, organization from New York City. And uh, I uh, take that poem because it's a trilogy and I take two parts of it. Uh, it's the first part and the last part of it. And uh, it's, uh, it's like a um, thing what is uh, uh, chasing me over eight, uh, no, over nine years now, um, because uh, after that poem, I didn't wrote something more. And uh, oh, interesting. Yes, uh, I just, after that, I, yeah, just last year, I began to write again. So, oh, and was it for the Dada special issue? Uh, I actually wrote that poem uh, uh, in, in kind of uh, connection to my partner from Philip and, uh, and uh, Micha and me. And uh, after that, uh, it lies in my pocket. And then uh, I wrote it, uh, I pull it out of a pocket for a three room press for the main tenant 14. Okay, I, I see. So thank you, uh, Lars. Yeah, Michael Steger, you are referring to here, a very dear friend of ours who passed away a couple of years ago, uh, tragically. Um, so um, the, the, poetry, uh, po uh, the poetry stage is yours now, uh, Lars. Um, and I'm looking forward to hear your poem that you wrote yourself. Mantra Surreal, Trilogy in two parts, read the first part, read the third part. Die Liebe ist Sieger, Rege ist sie bei Leid. Love is a victor and it is aroused by suffering. That means, die Liebe ist Sieger, Rege ist sie bei Leid. Love is a victor. It is aroused by suffering. Mantra surreal. Enchanted seas reflecting our pictures into heaven. They're not evil, they're not good. Still they are, still unevaluated. Circles full of light gonna get twisted. When your answer can't be true, if I give an evaluation of you. The rising of awareness is very tricky. Only you are me and I am you and the other way around. This is all we try to be. And still we are, still unevaluated. If you gonna give great, you gonna give great. But if you gonna try to not give great, you gonna give great. And if you gonna give great, you gonna force great. And if you gonna let it be, you just still like they are still unevaluated. <laughs> so uh, yeah so Lars thank you very much for your poem uh, and I heard there was some live sound uh, I guess uh, Philip was assisting right as the stage musician in the background um, both assisting yeah. each other <laughs> yeah I heard before yeah you were also helping him when he was presenting yeah so, um, so we are in the photo studio now and Martin is waiting for you. So um, good luck, Lars. I hope it will be a good photo session. <laughs> I'm looking forward to see the photograph.
we're done. Hello, Shelly. Hello, Anka. And you're you are one so of mad. those brave people. Yeah. <laughs> Showing yeah, up I've so never, early. I've never performed poetry to a semi-human, semi-robot. So this is exciting. I know. <laughs> There's always a first, right? And I mm -hmm. never performed in a in a real time live stream performance wearing digital masks either. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have to be brave. We have to just try things out and see what happens. So it's so, so good to have you here uh, from the Vancouver yeah. area. So for you, it's early in the morning. I hope you had yeah. some breakfast. Yes, I did. Um, Thank you. But yeah. Shelly, tell us about your name. How do we pronounce it in yes. those several languages that yes. are yours? So as, <laughs> as with so many folks here, it's everybody gets to decide, right? But uh, the, where it comes from is it, it's Yiddish. It's Jewish from Eastern Europe. So the, the last name is uh, Liebenbuch, which is kind of a... Yiddish being a Germanic dialect is kind of lover of books is what we think it was supposed to be. Liebenbuch originally and then translated over when my family, my dad's family came to Argentina and they tried to spell it. Um, and the first name is Shelley. So yes, and I'm here uh, near Vancouver on unceded territory of the Stolo peoples uh, in what is also known as British Columbia and Canada. So um, lots of migration um, as we've been hearing and very privileged in my own life that um, that was by choice, uh, but definitely you know, fed through many other historical reasons of familial migration. So yeah, very. Yeah, I mean, but like that your perfect? mask, <laughs> transcending boundaries and trying to be contained at the same time. I think. Right. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's so nice that your name speaks to loving books, right? Yes. <laughs> loving yes. uh, poetry, uh, yes. perhaps. I mean, many things can be written in books, I have to say, but uh, let's stick with the poetry today. <laughs> and today I have, uh, indeed, the book I am loving today is by a Dominican uh, New Yorker. So she's from Dominican Republic and based in New York. So she's Dominican York. And her name is Josefina Baez. And this is an excerpt from another poem of hers called Dominicanish, uh, which was published in 2000. Um, and uh, yeah, speaks to... A kind of a child's perspective of learning language and the complexity of that process. And it's uh, oh. in English and Spanish. Oh, yeah, that's wonderful. I want to hear this. <laughs> I yeah. definitely want. I feel like a child learning a language every day still. You know, I am always very fearful when I have to go to Anglophone students expecting, you know, mm. uh, flawless uh canadian accents and grammar and i you know I, I i give my best let's say that much so yeah uh the poetry stage dear shelly liebenbuch uh lover of books <laughs> is yours thank you so uh from uh josefina Baez, dominicanish tu sabes inglés ah ya habla un chin para nosotros ver si tu sabes i was changed they were changed he, she, it were changed too. Preterito plus cuan perfecto indicativo imperativo. Yo no voy a poner la boca así como un guante. Gosh, to pronounce one little phrase, one must become another person with the mouth all twisted. Don't get me wrong. Yo sé un chin. You, me, mine, love you, do, does, and doesn't. Been very very, very, very good to me, mine, myself, and así. Everything is vegetable, a vegetable, vegetable, refrigerator, refrigerador, fridge, comfortable, 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 Wednesday, Thursday, their days, once in a while, every scene, Son seen, something seen, past, perfect, perfect, past, regular, irregular, ing, very, 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 ando cantando.
Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you. <laughs> Shelly. The plus quam perfect, as thank we call you. it in German. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's a haunting, it seems, uh, people in other cultures also, which yes. is interesting, yes. which I did not expect to hear about. <laughs> And the beauty of messing uh, up, I think that's what she absolutely yes, there is no yes. right. There's just right. no possibility. So I think it's absolutely it's really yeah. Dada lives everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, we are in the photo studio now, uh, and uh, you met Martin and his camera, and Heike is documenting. And so, um, as we did before, we will leave you with him. Uh, for a while and he will take an absolutely stunning and wonderful and fantastic photograph of you uh, which we then will uh, see in the gallery exhibition on Saturday. So good luck Shelley. Um, <laughs> see you later. <laughs> <Bye>. <laughs> Hello, Sebastian. <laughs> how hey, are I'm you good. today? Good. How are you? I'm very good. Where are you located at the moment? Uh, right now I'm in Buffalo. Buffalo oh, you're in Buffalo. Yeah. At the side of the, of the border, southern yeah. side of the border. Yeah. Um, so, Sebastian, how do we pronounce your name? Uh, Sebastian Samur. And Sebastian. And is there any French story to your name? Uh, not, not really. It's like, again, it depends on who, which language. Sometimes in, in um, French, it would be Sébastien that people use. So I don't, I don't. Right. Mind, yeah. And then uh, the last name would be, how would they pronounce that? Samur or something? Like that? Samur is fine. Yeah. Or Samur, Samur is well. in French. Yeah. Samur. Yeah. 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 Um, so for everybody, you know, in, since in Melbourne, it is already uh, September 1st, I might as well announce that Sebastian uh, was starting a postdoc position on September 1st at our Center for Drama, Theater and Performance Studies. And so uh, congratulations to that, Sebastian. Yeah, thanks um, very much. Yeah. <laughs> uh, tomorrow is the big day. I mean, in Melbourne, you are already, you already have that position. <laughs> um, uh, so, uh, what's your poem about, uh, Sebastian, and, and why did you choose this one? Uh, so, I chose a short haiku. Um, uh, it's attributed often to Matsuo Basho, but it's not, it's not actually the case. I think it's uh, a man called Tawara Bo. Um, it's about Matsushima, which is a place in Japan which Matsuo uh, Basho traveled to, but was sort of awestruck and silenced. Um, so people attribute this kind of jokingly to, to Matsuo. And so I, I chose it because, uh, because of my interest in Japanese culture, but also um, interest in parody and then historical errors that take place. Right. And you also speak Japanese. We should uh, mention that as well. And you also studied in Japan for some time. <clears throat> yeah. For, or did bit, research. Yeah. 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 And I've been to Matsushima, yeah. And you've been in Matsushima. Okay, mm. so, um, yeah, so the poetry stage will be yours, um, uh, Sebastian. Um, and, um, and Don will let us know when, when you arrived digitally. Matsushima. Yeah. Sate. 
Matsushima. Yeah. Matsushima. Yeah. And this is the, the poem of just being awestruck. <laughs> <laughs> and the ya yeah and sate, that's actually all like vocal punctuation marks, basically, they're not even words. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Sebastian. Uh, this haiku might just perhaps save our uh, timeline plans <laughs> for our show today. <laughs> Basically, in a nutshell, uh, yeah. you have uh, shown us what, you know, being awestruck feels like <laughs> in sound. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, take the feeling with you into the photo studio with Martin, who is already waiting for you. And, um, and I leave you to it. And I'm very curious to see, you know, the awestruck uh, photograph uh, on Saturday in our <laughs> exhibition. <laughs> Be safe. <laughs> Thanks, Adia. Here we are, Dolores. Here we are. <laughs> we made it. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, Dolores, same, uh, same question to you. Um, where are you at the moment? I am in uh, almost rainy and uh, very autumnal San Pellegrino Terme in Lombardia in northern Italy. Huh. Isn't that where Roberto is supposed to be? Roberto is supposed, no, you come from a different part of Italy. <laughs> not that far, though. Not that far. Still quite northern, more or okay, less. Okay, Pellegrino, I, I only know as something to drink. <laughs> yeah, it's the place where um, <laughs> the drink comes from. However, if you were to walk around, you, I, I can send later. There is um, a fountain. Roberta knows it. It says only for San Pellegrino um, citizens. You know, oh. the rest of the universe because Nestle took it over. Um, half oh, the Nestle took it over. Yeah. Oh, that's bad. Um, that it's a beautiful place. It's, it's, it's fresh, it's green, it's the river, the pre Alps. Um, it's a glorious place to be. Yeah. And that's where you are. And now tell us about your name, uh, Dolores. Oh, it's um, oh, how I pronounce it or how yeah. it comes from. So and and my, where it comes from. <laughs> uh, so my first name is uh, was chosen by my mother. And surprisingly enough, um, I found uh, two women accidentally. Uh, I, 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 two sisters, two Spanish sisters who asked me the same thing. I don't speak Spanish. I'm Romanian. And uh, when uh, these two Spanish women seem to be surprised that I don't speak Spanish and my name is very Spanish, I said it was my mother's choice. Uh, uh, there was this woman, I said, I don't know what your political inclinations are. And then they both said, la passionaria. And I said, yeah, yeah, that was it. <laughs> So depending on where you look at, it can be this um, horrible uh, uh, embodiment of uh, communism, but uh, from a different perspective is this um, uh, feminist, uh, avant la lettre, is this a woman who was a teacher, who was a mother, and who fought all her life for the uh, rights of everybody, poor and 
not so poor to education and to a decent life. So um, yeah, she was an inspiration to my mom as a very strong woman and here I am. As for my last name, it's um, um, Pahalions. It's uh, my husband's name, pronounce it which and every way you want. Uh, my family back home in Romania called me Steinman. Uh, the American Canadian uh, contingent called me uh, Steinman. And of course the Italian say Steinman. So. Okay. It's up for grabs. Right. So wherever you are. Um, yeah. So tell us about your uh, your poem uh, so that we can uh, put you on the poetry stage. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, it's a Tristan Zara uh, poem. And I was inspired by you because <laughs> I was thinking of something uh, a bit, uh, uh, I would say, uh, less Dada, you know. More <laughs> brought together, and then you said it's going to be fun, and I thought, yeah, uh, this is a poem that would show. And we were talking about it. I said it's about uh, longing. Uh, we always think that the word "dor" is a very Romanian word with a very particular significance, and you would ah, call it "dingo." That's good to know. Yeah, uh, or in English, longing, and the French, as I was saying, what do you say, je m'ennuie de toi, uh, tu me manques, uh, je sais pas quoi. So I uh, suggested by you, I'll read it in Romanian, but it's available on YouTube um, in French, uh, spoken by Tristan Zara, at the same time with English subtitles to make it easy for, for everyone to... Uh, follow. So okay. Um, so uh, go ahead. I, I've Thank never you. heard uh, Tristan Zara speak uh, his own language. It's always in French. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And this yeah. is the 1920s, so it's quite late. Right. Uh, yeah. So off you go to our poetry stage. Thank you. Thank you, Auntie. Thank you all. Um, Done. Okay. Cântec Dada, de Tristan Sara. Cântul 1. Cântul unui dadaist care avea dada de dor, istovea al său motor care avea dada de dor. Ascensorul urca un rege, liber, greu, lin ca o fantomă. Brațul drept îl rupse în lege, l-a trimis papei la Roma. Asta, fiindcă se înțelege amintitul, ascensor nu avea dada de dor. Mâncați cara mea, spălați-vă mintea și coapătă. Da, 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 beți apă. 2. Cântul unui dadaist nici prea vesel, nici prea trist. Ce iubea o biciclistă, nici prea veselă, nici tristă. Dar soțul, de nou an, știa tot. Și într-o criză le-a trimis la Vatican trupurile între valize. Nici amant, nici ciclistă, nu mai fură cu o figură, nici prea veselă, nici tristă. Mâncați creier bun cu ceapă, spălați soldatul în cișmea. Da, 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 veți apă. 3. Cântul unui dadaist, ce era dada de dor. Ce era, deci, dadaist ca toți dadai de dor. Un șarpe purta șarpe. El închise brusc sub apa. Și ne șarpa în piei de șarpe, merse îmbrățișat pe papa. E mișcător, burtă în flori, nu mai funda da cu dor. Veți apă de la rândunel, spălați-vă cadelele în cișmea. Da, 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 mâncați pițel. Thank you. Yeah, so so this is wonderful, uh, Dolores. I'm I'm so happy that I uh, heard uh, you know for the first time really Tristan Sara's voice um, in in his own language. Uh, it's a really amazing feeling for me. Um, we will send you to the photo studio now, and I should also tell everybody we are in real time and it's live streamed, and we are sharing stories and poetry. 
but also I just learned as our, that our photographer has to attend a very important meeting very soon. And since uh -oh. we will go a little bit over time and I want everyone to be photographed, we will um, take uh, the last remaining photographs uh, okay. one by one. And then we will hear um, uh, the, the, poem, uh, the poems uh, by Kerstin Joy and Ijo afterwards um, so that uh, Martin can attend this, this very important meeting. Uh, clearly he is uh, very German. Uh, when he hears that something lasts 90 minutes, then that's exactly what it lasts and it cannot go one second over. So I have, uh, I am acu uh, uh, um, accustomed now, uh, both uh, through my experiences, my years in, in China and also in Canada, that time is a very, uh, uh, it's a very moving target in other cultures. <laughs> but I, I almost forgot what it what's what's what it's like to be a German when it comes to time. And Martin, you will make your you will make your meeting. We um, we move on now, Martin with Dolores, and then immediately after we will have Kerstin, Joy, and Idro also in your photo studio, and then you can leave. Uh, I do hope that you can uh, can keep the camera on, uh, and Heike can turn it off later like the, the laptop or is she also, does she also have to attend? Okay, Don says it's fine. So um, we have a little mini uh, photographer marathon now going on, starting with Dolores. Okay, so uh, we will just uh, focus on the uh, photography for now, Kerstin, and then yeah. we will listen to your poem uh, later. Um, yeah. And we sent you to this photo studio right now. This is joy. So Joy, good to have you here now in our photo studio. We will listen to your poem also, Please. but um, uh, first we will take your beautiful photograph so that we can all watch it on Saturday in our opening. Um, and there's Martin and I sent you to the photo studio. Um, be brave.
And here we are again, uh, just before we enter the photo studio with Ijo. Ijo, nice to have you here. We will listen to your poem uh, very soon, but let's uh, first uh, take the photograph um, and then we go from there. So uh, Don will be sending you into the, into the photo studio and, uh, and Martin will take your beautiful picture. Yes, but at first you have to put your head a little bit to the right side. Or so, so is better. Because you have a background photo and the things come out of your head. Do you know? So she, <laughs> okay, that's it. Okay. Hallo Kerstin, Hallo, das ist aber schön, dass wir dich hier auch begrüßen dürfen. Um, ja. Where are you at the moment? In the moment I'm in Edinburgh. Oh, uh, how did you end up there? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm starting a new position in two weeks time at Napier University. Oh, well, you know, you're, you're migrating a lot too. <laughs> I can say so, but it feels like <laughs> migrating since 1990. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, how do you pronounce your name? So, uh, in German it is Kerstin Stutterheim, but also I learned that Kerstin is originally from Sweden and would be pronounced Terstin, but is much nicer. But because of the synchronization of the Swedish film, like Kevin, <laughs> it's casting <laughs> made the German name. <laughs> I see. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, people always think I'm Dutch because I have I'm a Dutch first name and everybody, you know. And when I tell them that half of my generation is called Antje, they fall over and nobody of them is a Dutch, right? So, yeah, uh, life does weird things. Um, so this is really great. You're in Edinburgh now. Uh, you can uh, go to the Harry Potter pub and, and you will be happy forever, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us more about your uh, the poem that you uh, chose. Yeah, you know, it's written by Masha Kaleko, and that's also a German pronunciation of a name of someone who migrated a lot. Uh, so she migrated as a child during World War I to Berlin because her father was Russian, her mother um, Austrian, but they used to live in Galician. And so they moved to Berlin, uh, not to Germany first, moved around a lot. And then she became very soon and very young, very famous in Berlin amongst the um, artists and poetry scene and was published very early on. She had to uh, migrate, obviously, in 1938, uh, right in time uh, with her husband, and they ended up in New York. And um, the poem I have chosen was written in 1966. And although she used to live in New York for such a long time, uh, only very few of her poems were translated into English. And this one, there is a version online, but that's not really well done. So I decided to read the original German and the translation you can find 
online is more one to one, like deep translate translation and not getting. Yeah, the so the, the poetry is erased, right? <laughs> yes. That what makes a poem poetic. <laughs> Uh, was basically lost in translation, which happens very often, I find. Yeah, and I choose yeah. it for two reasons, because I think it meets a lot of uh, experiences of many people also today. And it has to do with, on the other hand, it has to do with my own experience, the experience of my family background and um, uh, I'm from Berlin as well, and I miss it a lot sometimes, uh, although it changed so much. And I think it's um, a poem which is true for so many people all over the world. And uh, it would be great to see a really well um, thought through translation one day of it. It's called Recipe. It's about fears, about expectations of life, it's about dealing with reality, being aware of challenges, and it's about migration, and and also I just survived cancer, and some of the lines uh, are reflecting on that as well. Yeah, it's definitely a, a poem about survival and, <laughs> and realism, absolutely, yeah, and yeah. I'm, I'm very happy that you are here with us because you survived cancer just recently. Um, yeah, so uh, we will send you to our uh, poetry stage and, uh, and then we will listen to this really, really beautiful poem. I, I know it, so I, it's, uh, yeah. Thank you for choosing it. Thank you for having me. Rezept. Jage die nächste fort und die Angst vor den Ängsten. Für die paar Jahre wird alles noch reichen. Das Brot im Kasten und der Anzug im Schrank. Sage nicht mein. Es ist dir alles geliehen. Lebe auf Zeit und sieh, wie wenig du brauchst. Richte dich ein und halte den Koffer bereit. Es ist wahr, was sie sagen. Was kommen muss, kommt. Gehe dem Leid nicht entgegen und ist es da, sieh ihm still ins Gesicht. Es ist vergänglich wie Glück. Erwarte nichts und hüte besorgt dein Geheimnis. Auch der Bruder verrät, geht es um dich oder ihn. Den eigenen Schatten nimm zum Weggefährten. Pick deine Stube wohl und tausche den Gruß mit dem Nachbarn. Flicke heiter den Zaun und auch die Glocke am Tor. Die Wunde in dir halte wach unter dem Dach im Einstweilen. Zerreiß deine Pläne, sei klug und halte dich an Wunder. Sie sind lang schon verzeichnet im großen Plan. Jage die Ängste fort und die Angst vor den Ängsten. Wait. Then we go to Joy. Ah, joy, your name alone, eh? <laughs> uh, brings so much joy to this room as well. It's so great to see you here. I just only recently met you. Some, you know, some people in this room I have known for decades. I, I can't believe it myself. Uh, and then some people I literally only met kind of yesterday-ish, right? Renusha, for example, also <laughs> uh, one of those people I only recently met. I'm very happy about that as well. Um, so, Joy, uh, what about your name? How do we pronounce it in Canada? Well, I'm, I'm actually from the States originally. So in America, right. Americans would, and many Canadians would pronounce it Joy Tanner. And uh, mm -hmm. I think in German, it, I think it translates to Freude. Joy, definitely. Yes, yes. Yeah, and, and Tana, as we would pronounce your last name, sounds like a tree. Yes, uh, Tana. The Christmas it's, tree, the Tana, right? Yeah, my grandfather yeah. was uh, Schweizerdeutsch. So, oh, uh, I see. <laughs> that's where that name came from. So, so coming from the woods, the, the Swiss woods, basically. We've emerged. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, you emerged from the woods. Um, okay, so you chose a very particular poem uh, as well. Uh, so why this one? And 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 once you, we learned about that, we will send you on our poetry stage. Sure, certainly. Thank you for having me. Uh, this is called A Letter to Prisoners by James Baldwin. Uh, it was written in 1982. Uh, specifically about the African-American male experience of incarceration and uh, sort of the, the imbalance of, of uh, that population who have been in, uh, incarcerated. But for me, it resonates uh, specifically in a more broad sense, which is what great writing does, which is what James Baldwin, I think, brings to the table. Uh, it's about all of us and how we imprison ourselves, whether it's uh, ancestral karma, whether it's through the leadership of the countries that we live in, um, whether it's self-imposed thought uh, process. So it, it speaks very broadly to um, many people, although it is specific to a particular uh, experience. So this is why I chose it. And right. during COVID, you know, I mean, I know. Yeah, it makes us think. And you also sit in Toronto, right? Yes, the dish yeah. with one spoon territory. Uh, right. Wouldn't have shown yeah. in the sagas. Yeah, yeah. So we, sh we, share, we share the land here. Um, okay, Joy, um, thank you for your uh, explanations. Always so, I'm always so curious to hear more about these things. But we are sending you now to our poetry stage. All right. What artists and prisoners have in common is that both know what it means to be free. Now, this is a thoroughly unattractive paradox, which I, like many another, would like to be able to avoid. But it is impossible not to recognize that the people who are endlessly boasting of their freedom, we're the best because we're free, loathe the very suggestion of such a possibility for anyone other than themselves. They are forever stitching flags, making and threatening and dropping bombs, creating instruments of torture and torture chambers and overseers and deputies and detention centers. Their notion of freedom is so strenuously calisthenic, not to say defensive, that freedom becomes a matter of keeping everybody else out of your backyard. A vast amount of energy, the word is not yet obsolete, and an indefensible proportion of the public treasury, this government is spending our money after all, go into endeavors which have as their single intention and concrete purpose and effect that no one be so rash as to act or to dream of acting on his or her right to be. I have suggested that the connection between the artist and the prisoner is an unattractive paradox, but it is more than that. I have called it an unattractive paradox because it would seem to indicate that in general, we value freedom or find ourselves compelled to attempt to define it only when it is arbitrarily limited or menaced. When another human power has the right to tell us when and where to stand or sit or move or live or make love or have or claim our children or bow mighty low or die. We do not feel this way about the rain, the snow, the thunder or the earthquake or death. These have no reason to consider our hope or anguish. The thunder which deafens me is not compelled to hear my cry or answer my plea. But we are compelled to hear each other, knowing perfectly well how little can be done. One discovers how to do something. This may be part of the definition or pride or price of freedom, for this apprehension necessarily involves a real recognition of and respect for the other. For the condition of the other. The other is no longer other and is indeed, as the song puts it, closer than a brother. The other is oneself. 
There is absolutely nothing in my experience more painful, more devastating than this revelation. One can scarcely live with it, but one can certainly not begin to live without it. It is this perception as I begin more and more to believe, which gives the person the energy, the passion to break the chains that bind him, or to be accurate, the chains which bind us. The unattractive paradox is that it is this danger, this action, this recognition of what it means to love one another, which defines freedom, which brings it to being, which makes it as real as the word becomes flesh to dwell among us. Brethren, please remember, especially in this speechless time and place, that in the beginning was the word. We are in ourselves much older than any witness to Carthage or Pompeii, and having been through auction, flood, and fire, to say nothing of the spectacular excavation of our names, are not destined for the rubble. Wow, that's very powerful also. Interweaving so many things were, that were discussed today uh, through poetry. Idro, here we are. So good to see you. Um, so what's the TV tower in your back? Where is this? Uh, this is a picture of Shanghai. And that's the TV tower, like the most iconic building in Shanghai. Right. I, I thought I had seen it before. <laughs> but, <laughs> so Shanghai, a place where Philippe and I met. <laughs> and uh, before the pandemic. And so you chose this background. It was so good to, to see you here uh, in, our, in our performance today. Um, how do we pronounce your name, Ijo? Uh, you pronounce it right. It's Ijo Zhao. Yeah. Ijo Zhao. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So uh, how do people often uh, pronounce your name? Uh, you are, are you in Toronto right now? Yes, I am. Uh, 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 they usually try to pronounce each show, and uh, I, I think that's good enough. <laughs> variations, right? Variations, yeah. It's, uh, uh, it is interesting that you uh, are using your original Chinese name. Uh, many Chinese students um, I see are changing to Western names, which I, uh, you know, I find that a, a kind of, I understand, but I also think, you know, um, Okay, so what's the poem about that you chose and why did you choose this one? Uh, yeah, by the way, uh, the background of Shanghai is the place uh, where the, poet, the, the story in the poetry takes place, hence the background. Um, I see. And, uh, I'm actually presenting a Chinese song called Wo de Hua Ban Xie, My Skate Shoes. Uh, the lyrics are written by Pang Mai Long. Uh, it's a song about Pang Mai Lang recounting his teenagerhood experience of traveling from the countryside to the city one day to buy a pair of most fashionable skate shoes. And that right. day was the happiest day of his life. Um, the, actually, uh, this song, um, Pang Mai Lang never received musical training. He came from a poor farmer's family but he aspired to become an international pop star after he saw Michael Jackson on TV. Um, you know, oh, yeah, in, <laughs> interesting. Yeah, in 2014, Pang uploaded this song, My Skate Shoes, onto the internet, and it became viral. And, it be, and because of how bad and stupid and ridiculous the song is, and uh, Pang himself also became a famous internet meme. Uh, we last hear from Pang uh, in March this year, where he made headline news for his incarceration um, in the hospital uh, due to schizophrenia. And despite his internet fame, he always lived in poverty, solitude, 
and a with a disastrously failed <laughs> musical career. Uh, but I chose this song simply because I really like it, and the, it makes people question like what is art, uh, what is an artist, and uh, but these questions lose their relevancy in face of the song's pure sincerity and rawness. I think. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Michael Jackson, right? Um, so this uh, singer uh, grew up in a small village, travels to the city, enters the internet and the global village, so to speak, uh, only to, to end up in a, in a hospital uh, uh, diagnosed with schizophrenia. Um, hmm. Yeah, I mean, Skate shoes, I don't know, you know, it's the last uh, days of summer. Most Canadians don't like to talk about that. <laughs> they just want to get it going. But we should be prepared. We should be prepared. Um, so thank you. That was a really great story that you shared here with us. And we will send you to our poetry stage. Uh, in my presentation, I will try my best to imitate Pang Mai Lang's performance. Yo,先是,我都已忘记,但我现在还记得,在一个晚上,我的母亲问我,今天怎么不开心?我说在我想象中,有一双滑板鞋,与众不同最时尚跳入肯定棒,整个城市找遍所有的街,都没有。他说将
uh, I guess that's true. I, I have neither, but I have a, a very well developed power of imagination. I can just see the pool over here and the martini over there and some olive, I guess. <laughs> will also pay, play a role. So everybody, I love you. It's wonderful that you were here. We share so many things and um, I wish you a fantastic week and I hope to see you and your avatar on Saturday when we open our exhibition on Mozilla Hubs and more will be coming forward. And please send me little blurbs about yourself that we can also put in the exhibition. Um, and that dear audience, uh, or the one person who maybe who found the link to our live performance on YouTube, thank you for being here. We cherish you and we will share the recording of this performance with thousands and thousands of people over the next 100 years. Thank you, everybody. This was our show. <laughs> and that's the end. Thank you.